graphing rational equations, we have worked through all of the four steps of graphing rational equations, the y-intercept, the x-intercept, our domain, meaning finding our vertical asymptotes, and in our last video, we worked on the end behavior, looking at the horizontal or oblique asymptotes using our face case. So here we're going to put all of these steps together. We're actually going to sketch the graph of the example that I've worked in each of the individual videos so far. So let's see what we know up until this point. So I've given you the example that we've seen, and we found our y-intercept as negative 5 thirds. We do not have any x-intercepts. We have two vertical asymptotes, one at positive root 3 over 2 and one at negative root 3 over 2. And then we had a horizontal asymptote, so in this one it was a horizontal asymptote, at y equals 3 fourths. So I'm going to plot all of this information on the graph, and I'm going to see how that helps us to come up with an actual graph of my rational equation. Now, if I look at all of my numbers here, I see they're all quite small. So instead of making my tick marks represent by 1, I'm actually going to go by 2s here. So in this case, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I'm going to do that in all directions. So that way, I'm actually zooming it in just a little bit so I can see more of the important details rather than squishing everything in a very limited part of the graph. Okay, my y-intercept, let me graph that in red, that's at negative 5 thirds. And if you ever need to come up with the decimal approximation to graph these, that's perfectly fine. I encourage you to do so. If I just change this to a mixed fraction, that actually gives me 1 and 2 thirds. So I'm going to go down 1 and 2 thirds. That gives me my y-intercept. My x-intercepts, I did not have any, so I will not plot any in this case. My vertical asymptotes, I definitely want to come up with my approximation here so I can figure out where to graph these guys at. If I type this in my calculator of root 3 over 2, that comes up with approximately 0.866. So I'm going to draw vertical dotted lines, one at positive 0.866. Let me draw these in blue. So not quite one, but a pretty close to it. So there is a vertical asymptote. Okay. And one at negative 0.866. So one at the left-hand part of this, not quite one, but something close to it. There's my vertical asymptotes. Moving on to step four, my horizontal asymptote. Let me draw that in green. Of course, it's going to be drawn by a horizontal dotted line at 3 fourths. So here's my one value. So let me draw it at 3 fourths here. So this information here should be the basis of this graph. My graphs are going to go through all of the points that I have plotted, but in this case, it's just one. And it's going to follow all of those dotted lines towards the edge of the graph. So it's going to follow my horizontal dotted line here, my horizontal dotted line here, and my vertical dotted lines here or here at the very ends of the graph. Now, I am very experienced with this, so I already know what this graph looks like. I, of course, assume that you do not because you don't have a whole lot of experience with this. So that leads us to step number five of graphing rational equations, meaning if you need to come up with anything else, don't be afraid to do so. And usually the way that we come up with anything is we plot ordered pairs or extra points on our graph. I know what's happening in between my two blue vertical asymptotes here, or I at least have an idea of it because I have a point there. Okay? But what's happening to the left of this blue line here? And what's happening to the right of this blue line here? And so we might want to figure that out by coming up with ordered pairs. So let's do that by just plotting in negative 1 and positive 1 into our original equation. So f of negative 1. That gives me 5 plus 3 times negative 1 squared over 4 times negative 1 squared minus 3. Simplifying this, it gives me 5 plus 3 on the top and 4 minus 3 on the bottom. 
Negative 1 squared cancels out to give me 1, so when I multiply it by those numbers, they stay the same. That gives me 8 over 1. So that gives me the ordered pair, negative 1, 8. If I were to plug in positive 1, I'm actually going to get the same number because everything I plug in squares and cancels out, which means it's going to be the exact same thing on the right as it is on the left. So that gives me an ordered pair of positive 1, 8. So I can plot those on my graph. Now those are actually quite higher than what I've even graphed here. My graph starts at 5 because I extended my tick marks. So I have negative 1, 8. I have that point clear up here. And I have positive 1, 8. So I have that point up here. Again, if that's not enough information for you, I encourage you to plot extra points or extra ordered pairs. So I actually did that. I actually um, found quite a few extra ordered pairs here. I worked ahead a little bit. So with the same stuff that I had on my graph over here, notice I have all of these extra ordered pairs or extra points over here that I can plot. So let me plot all of those. First of all, I have negative 0.5 or negative 1 half and negative 2.875. So 1, 2, 3, so that's about here. And I have the same thing on the positive part of this graph. I already plotted my 1, 8, negative 1, 8. So let's look at negative 2, 1.3. So that gives me a point about here. Same thing on the right-hand side. Negative 3 and 32 over 33 officially. So that gives me 1 point or almost 1. Same thing on the right-hand side. And then my positive and negative 5 gives me 0.82. So really close over here. Okay. So again, if I played connect the dots, that's going to give me the image of this graph. And if that's not enough, you are always more than welcome to plot more ordered points. Now, there is one key hint that I want to give you here, and that is to how many parts or how many different pieces of the graph that we should have. And it depends upon the vertical asymptotes. So, however many vertical asymptotes you have, you should have one more part to the graph. In this case, I have two vertical asymptotes. That means it splits my graph by two lines here which guarantees that I have three parts or three pieces of my graph. So it splits it into three pieces, one to the left of my vertical asymptote, one in the middle of my vertical asymptotes, and one to the right of this other asymptote. So that should tell you how many parts of the graph that you should have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play connect the dots, but I'm going to separate them by these vertical asymptotes. Also, keep in mind that it's got to follow these asymptotes at the very end. So it's following this asymptote here on the left, and then it curves around, and it follows this asymptote going up. Same thing's happening on the very right-hand part of the graph. It follows my vertical asymptote going up, and it curves around, and it follows that horizontal asymptote on the right. That gives me my two parts on the outside, now my middle part on the inside. So it's got to follow this vertical asymptote here, hit my two points, curves around, and then follows my other vertical asymptote there. So those red parts are the actual parts to my graph. Now, I want to go back and I want to look at these steps of graphing the rational equations one more time. Okay. So we've done steps one through five, but we have technology nowadays, so I highly encourage you to use this technology to check with your graphing calculator. And remember, since I'm a teacher, I'm telling you to do this as step six, but if I was a student, I would probably actually move it to step one and check every part along the way so I don't get to the end and realize that I've messed the whole thing up, so I don't get thoroughly frustrated because I spent a whole lot of time on something that doesn't work out. So let me pull up my graphing calculator here, and let me double check that my actual graph confirms every part that I've done individually. 
So the first thing that I have to do is substitute this in for my graphing calculator. Since it's the graphing thing, I have to plug it into my y equal. Now when I substitute it in, I have to substitute it in the right format. So let me tell you the incorrect way first, and then I'll come back and tell you the, the correct way second. The incorrect way is just to type it like you see it. 5 plus 3x squared divided by 4x squared minus 3. The problem with this is your calculator looks at the rules of order, and it knows to do division before addition subtraction. So it would actually just divide these two pieces as the first step, and then worry about adding the 5 and subtracting the 3 as the second step. So your calculator would actually graph it incorrect. So the way to tell your calculator to do it correctly is to put parentheses around the numerator and parentheses around the denominator. So that way it knows to graph the whole numerator divided by the whole denominator. So let's go back and insert those parentheses in. So let me go all the way back to the beginning here. The way you insert something is in this INS above the delete button. So second delete, which really means you're inserting, and it blinks to tell you that you're inserting it. Open parenthesis. Go over to where I want to close it. Do the same thing. Second insert close parenthesis. Insert the one in my denominator. And all the way at the end, I don't have to insert it because, of course, it's the very last thing. Now, I can push the graph button here, but it's going to graph it to whatever window you left it at last time, which might or might not be correct. So to always change it to the standard window, I encourage you to push the zoom. And then number six is the standard. So zoom six. This graphs it at our standard window. And that gives me this graph here. So let's compare that with the graph that we have graphed. So we can see that the blue graph drawn here is the exact same thing as the red graph that we have drawn here. The only difference is the calculator does not draw the vertical or the horizontal asymptotes. It leaves those parts off. So we have to have ours on our graph, so that tells us the lines that our graph is going to follow. Again, it's kind of like follow the leader. The vertical and the horizontal asymptotes are the leader, but our graph, our lines, are actually going to follow. Now, if you had an older version of this calculator, perhaps a TI-83, your graph might look a little bit different from this. And that's why it's so important that you do all of the steps by hand first, so you can actually see what's part of the graph and what's part of the asymptote. So if you had an older version of the graph, your graph most likely looks like this or something similar to that because it combines the graph and the asymptotes all at once. So your job is to point out that this is actually part of the graph, this is actually part of the graph, and this is actually part of the graph where these red lines here are actually asymptotes and not part of the graph. So again, that's why we have to do a lot of this stuff by hand and not just go off what the calculator tells us. So I have finished all the individual steps to graphing rational equations, but I'm going to work, work a couple more examples of these from start to finish so you can get a little bit more experience under your belt. Also, I want to work a couple more steps so we can see all instances of the face case and how to deal with each one of those.